Joining us now, she is the head coach of the two-time now defending SEC champions, the Arkansas Razorbacks, uh, in an eighth season at Arkansas, five straight NCAA tournaments. I speak of our good friend Courtney Dyfu, who's also, I always like to say, also a former national champion player at Cal. But, uh, you know, for our, oh, you know, so you've done it all. Of my glory days. <laughs> You're doing some glory days now as a coach. Uh, what has it been like? It's been fascinating to see the growth of your program where when you took over this program, it was that, right, I think though everybody in Art Fayetteville would admit was at rock bottom of the league in the SEC, and you've risen it now to the point where you're selling more tickets, you're, you know, part, big, big boost, lots of media attention. I mean, you've been doing a lot of media in locally because there's so much interest now in Arkansas softball. What has it been like to see this kind of explosion for the program as you've kind of built it to this point? It's been really exciting. I, um, I have chills. I still kind of pinch myself that I get to be the head coach here, um, in this place. And, um, it's been really exciting. It's, I always have to remind myself that it's year eight cause it's gone so quickly. Um, and we just, uh, enjoyed every, every step of the way, but, um, we knew that this place was special and we knew that it had everything to really get it going. And, um, fortunately we've had some really key players that, um, uh, thought the same thing because <laughs> yeah. if we don't get those big key players, it doesn't matter. Um, but it's, it's a, a really awesome place. And I'm just really, really proud of, of what we've done, but even more so how we've done it and who we've done it with. So, um, it's been great. I mean, you're so seven, <laughs> you're seven wins away from becoming the all-time, uh, winner, winning as a coach in Arkansas softball history. Yeah, isn't that crazy? I don't know. What, how do you feel you're different today than you were when you took over the program? Oh gosh, I've never been asked that. Okay. Um, how am I different? Well, I'm a lot more confident. Um, and I, I don't know that my, my teams would say that cause I don't know that they would necessarily feel that I wasn't, you know, I just feel a lot more settled. Um, I am my early players would say that I'm softer, <laughs> but I think every early player would say that. Uh, I spoke at, at this, um, this, this convention thing this weekend for the NFCA and one of our first pitchers was there and I was going through some of our pitching drills and, um, kind of talking about some of the conditioning things, um, that we do now. And I heard this like, ha, you know, from like the second row, I'm like, I know grace, you know, I've softened. She's like, what? Do you know what we went through? No, but I just think that, you know, what COVID has taught us more than anything is that just to slow down and, and deal with the individual and, and, um, it's taught us a lot of things. So I don't want to discount like all of the things that happened in that time, but what it, what it did for us coaches and our teams is like, it's dealing with the individual and it's, and it's really just focusing so much more on the, on the relation piece of, of what we do and, and what the individual needs. Um, and so I would say that that's the biggest difference more than anything. We haven't changed our coaching style. We haven't changed who we look for. I think we're recruiting in a different um, tier than we were. Um, although it's really hard to say when our first two recruits were Mary Half and Hannah McEwen. So it's, um, but they had fallen through the cracks. So there's just things that have changed with having more exposure and having more success. But um, the day-to-day -day for us really hasn't changed too much. And I think that's that's why we've had success is um, what you see is what you get with us. And we just pour into our athletes every single day. What's been obviously with the success you've had to do, like I mentioned, you've done a lot of media over locally, like even shows that are not necessarily sports centric. That's how significant Arkansas softball has become. What has that been like for you to kind of be, uh, you know, part of the job as a coach is kind of be the, you know, be the face and, and kind of get the word out about your program. That, that's a, you, that's kind of the last couple of years there. Well, it's something I have to always remind myself as part of my responsibility because I, I don't um, thrive in that um, in that space, it's not my comfort area, but I am, I am that to our program. And so it's exciting because every year the media has shown up a little earlier. Um, there is a really, really huge bat and ball culture in Arkansas and it's, and it's, um, it's just really, really special. Um, but the media showed up 
even sooner this year. I've had more requests for podcasts and I just think it's such a huge reflection of our team and how they play. Um, obviously the success, but you can't come to a game and not walk away um, completely enthralled by, by how our players play the game. Um, the other crazy thing is, is like just walking around Arkansas. It's like, I can't go into Sam's club without someone saying, Hey coach, how are you? It's like, all right, I got to clean it up a little bit. You know, I can't, um, but that's all, that's all exciting. Um, it's, it's really, really exciting for our program and for our athletes. Yeah. You're a big public figure now, uh, which is kind of exciting. Speaks volumes for the sport. I mean, you know, you're, you're one of your mentors, Patty Gasso goes through this, as you know, at Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And it's, we're starting to see more of more of this across the country, which is great. Cause you know, obviously we're used to like football, obviously Sam Pittman goes through it, coach Musselman men's basketball, but you and Van Horn do the same, have to do similar things. And I would imagine all of you as coaches, I know you all tight kind of probably talk about that. Oh yeah, we do. We do a lot. It's, it's really, really interesting to hear things through their perspective because we, as much as we go through, we have no idea what they go through and how magnified everything is. And um, yeah, I don't even know that Sam or Mus or, I mean, Dave, probably just because he's been here for so long. I don't know if they could even just go to a restaurant, and have dinner without like being bombarded. Um, and just, just, I mean, with that comes a lot, you, a lot of support, a lot of criticism. Um, people, you know, we have a really strong fan base and with that, they think that they get a strong opinion. Um, and so, and it's even more so at their levels. Um, but yeah, it's, um, it's a really tight knit group and we all feel like, we go through it together. Um, and, and so it's, it's really, really special just be able to talk to each other and bounce ideas off of each other and, and, uh, really use each other for that. I just want to stay for the record, by the way, we had you on the podcast, like before it was the it thing to do like five years ago, just for the record. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to state that, uh, <laughs> there. Well, let's, let's talk about, before we talk about this year's team, when you reflect on last year and everything you accomplished, what comes to your mind that you've had time to think about in the off season? Well, I still have to, I mean, there's only one team that gets to end the way they want. And, and so as competitive people in this, you always kind of look back and say, what could we have done differently? What do we need to do better? Um, and so I would be lying if I didn't say that always was at my mind first. Um, but when I reflect on that team last year, they were just incredibly special. It was such a, a a huge mix of um, players that we had from the beginning that completely turned our program around and players that we invited in that wanted to be a part of what these players built um, and just wanted to enjoy it. I think when we, when we look at transfers and, and them choosing us, I think they want to go somewhere they can win and somewhere they can go and have fun and enjoy it. And, and they, they get both of those things here. Um, but that team was, incredibly seasoned, incredibly mature. When you look at what this program has done um, there over the last handful of years, you can't talk about it without mentioning Mary Half, Hannah McEwen, Lenny Malkin, you know, those, that crew that came in before and wanted to leave their mark. And, and so when I look at that team last year, they, without a doubt, left their mark on Arkansas softball and softball nationally. It was a veteran team. Uh, most of them have graduated, moved on. As a result, you have a young team this year. As a coaching staff, how much of a difference from a, your coaching style do you do at all, if adapt at all, have, ver, having a young team versus having a veteran team? Well, I don't it, – it does. It changes a lot. But every fall changes. Every team changes for what they need from us. And – um and so every fall comes with different challenges. This fall came with challenges of, of getting the freshmen um, grown up really fast, <laughs> you know, for lack of a better word. Um, but we, you know, any freshman, I think they come to this level and they will go through these ups and downs at the beginning of feeling like they have to prove themselves feeling like they are comparing themselves a little bit to who's already been in the system and older. Um, and then they kind of come through and they settle in and say, Oh yeah, um, I'm good. I meant to be here. Um, I'm, I'm my best when I'm just my best me. And, and so we've gone through all that with our freshmen. We've had really great leaders and returners 
in that process of helping them through that. Um, but it's, yeah, it changes, you know, last year's team, you're just trying to like, um, just manage because they know what it takes to compete at this level. They know what their bodies need. They know how to train to be their best. Um, and so you're managing more of the mentality and the up and downs that the game throws at you more so than anything else, teaching the game and the speed of the game and all those things that, that you have to transition when you get to our level. Um, and so this fall and with this team, it's been, um, more of that teaching piece and just kind of getting them to, to be their most confident self. It helps too. Answer. I hope that works. It, it works for me. And it helps okay, good. <laughs> this freshman class. It was the number one ranked class, according to extra inning softball, which in other words, you're bringing in talent. It's young, but it's talented. Do you, do you have to be patient to some extent, knowing that each freshman, for example, has their own timeline is when they figure things out? Yes. We <laughs> remind ourselves that every day. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, coaching is a huge thing. Part of, I mean, you have to have patience. It has to be one of, one of your biggest attributes because you always want things in the immediate and that's not how it works. It's going to work on their timeline and that's how they're going to get it the best is when it clicks for them. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been, uh, a challenging fall in that regard. And, and it's also reminding us of having the patience when we get to season, because we're going to take some lumps from, from that. Um, I think it's going to work to our benefit. I do. Um, but there are going to be some games that we win that we shouldn't and some games that we lose that we shouldn't. And, and it's just making sure that we're coaching them through that and staying patient. Let's talk about your offense. You're led by Hannah Gamble, who's one of the best hitters in the country, one of the best players in the country. Uh, what 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 do you expect from her now? Because now all of a sudden she's become one of your one of your veteran leaders uh, mm -hmm. with, with this young roster. Yeah, I expect exactly that to to be a leader. Um, I know she was the the one in that sea of of grown women in our lineup last year. You know, um, and she handled it beautifully. Um, and so she is a leader, a nurturer by nature. And that's what she's done for this team. I think her biggest area of growth has been just her, um, competitive maturity. Um, and, and just the, the perspective that she has of, of having gone through it. And I think that's something that a lot of our freshmen could really use from her. And so we are going to move her behind the plate. So going from third, um, you know, you know, most great coaches will take a first team all American third baseman and move them. So, um, that's what we're going to do with her. And so it's going to be really nice for her to lead from behind the plate. Um, you know, with someone like Hannah offensively, um, there's not many pitches she can't hit. So when it, when it comes from her knowledge base and her experience, being able to share that with individual, you know, the younger ones, the freshmen, the other individuals on our team, she always does that in a really competitive positive way that's who she's been um but i'm really really excited for her to bring our passion from behind the plate do you see her being your catcher exclusively or do you see her maybe playing her some at third base when you have when you need to and maybe uh kind of going back and forth because i've seen it done both ways so i'm kind of curious do you want her to just focus on catching or could you see her playing good still question third? good question i don't know i um i don't know i see her being on the field <laughs> that's the part that's the most important part okay okay yeah i'll answer by saying i see her being on the field you know it's it's hard it's it's a hard transition going from catcher to third the the weird thing is is that she has said oh i don't know if i'll ever be able to go back to third it's going to be so boring and i'm like no <laughs> one describes third base as boring no one um but when she's involved in every pitch and she's had you know a fall of that it it's it's a different transition there. Um, so I don't know. I think that's something we're going to have to feel out. We are going to have to play more players than we've ever had in the past um, because we're going to have really great players that aren't in the lineup. We have a lot of depth and we have to make sure that we're doing a good job of getting them all um, mature in, in the game. The hot corner is boring. That's a, that's a learning up something yeah, new. Yeah, said no one ever. <laughs> But hey, that tells you the confidence she has, right? Like a cool customer uh, yeah. deal. Who are some of the other players you expect to contribute to the offense? You know, you lost a lot offensively, as we've talked about earlier, but that brings opportunities for others. So what, what do you expect? Who do you expect to see kind of contribute to this offense? 
Well, I expect Christina Foreman um, to be a staple up at the top of the order and, and Kylie Halverson to be a staple up at the top of the order. Um, they've been tremendous on the field and off the field for our team of just jumping in and, and demanding um, the respect from their teammates with how they carry themselves and how they com compete. Um, so I expect them to be at the top. Reagan Johnson, um, a freshman from Texas. She's the fastest player we've probably ever had in our program. Um, she'll, she'll be up at the top most likely. Um, we're still working through that lineup piece. Casey Hoffman, Spencer Priggy, um, Rylan Hedgecock, you know, we have, uh, we have a lot of tools offensively and it's going to look a little different, um, than it has in the past. We have a lot more layers to it, but, um, you know, Yo does a really great job of developing offense. She always has. And so every time we've been questioned with, oh, you've lost so much offense, what are you going to do? Well, we're going to develop more offense. And that's what she's done with this team too. Well, and I've seen Halverson in person there in the regionals, actually, in South Dakota State. She has an explosive bat. I feel like it's a good fit at that stadium at Bogle there. And Foreman's talented bats, too, there. Uh, yeah. And then this freshman class that will contribute offensively. What can you tell us for Razorback fans that are going to get to learn these names of some of these freshmen uh, in this highly touted class? What can, what names can I tell them? Yeah, give them some okay. names. And what do you think they'll bring in, in, as a whole to this team? Well, Reagan Johnson's um, most likely going to play, play center for us. Um, she can flat fly. Um, the ground she covers out there, the tools she has offensively when she's a, a true triple threat, she can drive the ball, she can drop the bunt, she can she can soft slap, she can hard, she can do it all. Um, she can flat fly. So that's a name you definitely need to know. Um, Italia Rijo, um, middle infielder. Um, if we played today, she'd be at shortstop. Um, lefty bat. Um, just a really, really um, meticulous glove, trained glove. Her her dad played in the MLB. You can tell that she's trained that way. Um, Kiana Estrada, Kiki Estrada has a big lefty bat, probably the um, highest ranked lefty bat on that, on that uh, list of rankings. Uh, who am I missing? We have such a long list. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a, it's a, no, you, you joke, but it is a seriously talented. And you mentioned you, is that why you feel you still have, you have more as much depth, if not more than you've had, even though it's a young team, people usually, when you have a young team, you don't have the depth, but in this case you do because of the talent that you have at this class. We really do. We really do. And, um, and that's the thing. It's like, you know, we have probably four or five competing at the, the big spots right now that are, it, you know, still kind of open. I, I think that there isn't anybody that at our field that wouldn't say Christina Foreman's going to start at second base, you know? Um, so just those positions that are open, it is like a five person race. And, and we have, um, a lot that are just like right nipping at the back and, and just making it really, really fun internal competition. Pitching wise, you bring back Shanice Dells, the reigning SEC pitcher of the year. Uh, this is the first time we've had you on the show and we're, we don't talk about Mary half as being part of your staff. How yeah, strange has it been not to see Mary around? It's really weird. I'm texting the other day. I'm like, it's so weird that you're not in the bullpen. Um, it, it's, it's really, it's, it's really different. You know, you get used to, you know, who you work with. She's been five of my seven years. And so you go in, um, into year eight and it's a completely different staff and, um, it's good. It, it's good. You know, it's, it's different. I think that there's a lot out in front of us of, of earning a spot, of proving yourself of all those things of, of just ultimately, you know, creating outs. I think we're going to pair a lot more pitching this year than we've had in the past of going back to the, uh, two person rotation of autumn storms and Mary have, and then using mostly, you know, Mary and, and Shanice last year, we're going to use all five. Um, they're very different. Shanice is going to anchor it. I, obviously. I mean, she's, she's incredibly talented. I think I know she's better than she even was last year. Um, and, and so we're going to, we're going to really use, we have three freshmen. We have Callie Turner looking better than ever. And, and we're going to use and need all five. With a freshman pitcher, how do you handle a freshman pitcher and their development? You've done it before. What's the key to the, you know, that process as far as a freshman pitcher versus somebody like Shanice Dells, who's knows what, you know, is the veteran. Yeah, she's really seasoned. And, and so she's been huge for the freshman to lean on um, more than anything. And, and she's really um, 
taken to that leadership role with them. And, and it's been really, really, really big for us. Um, with the freshmen, it's just getting them to understand one, you don't have to be perfect. You're going to throw a perfect pitch. The other day, Hannah Kamen's in threw a perfect pitch and Hannah Gamel hit it on the berm. And, and it's just like, yeah, that's softball. You're also going to miss badly and it's going to be a strike three. Um, and so just, just getting them to understand all you can do is, is what you can do. When that ball leaves your hand, you have no control over it. And then you just kind of learn from it and go to the next pitch. Um, and, and just, you know, what they've done really, really well is just with their demeanor and their presence. Um, and this team wants to fight for them. And, um, and so I think that's the biggest thing a freshman can do is just fight for her team and, and put everything out there. I don't know if you forgot that you had a young team when you made the schedule. Uh, there, because <laughs> I know, what was I thinking? You no, got pretty kidding. stacked. You're going to Vegas, uh, which for the start of the year to play a pretty good UNLV team, you got in that field. Uh, I mean, Bay I think Baylor's in that field. I mean, that's a strong yep. opening weekend field there in Vegas. You're yeah. going to Clearwater for the ESPN tournament. That's a marquee tournament that speaks for itself with that lineup. Uh, you got Arizona coming to your place. Uh, that's pretty significant there. Uh, just talk about your overall non-conference schedule. Cause I know you like to challenge your team, but, uh, I guess it doesn't matter whether it's a veteran or young team. You like to challenge your team. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, obviously everything we do scheduling is, is very calculated with, with Matt leading the charge on that. Um, we sat down and, and said with this young team, we need to challenge them right away out of, out the gates and, and see what we need to adjust. We want to try to expose any cracks, you know, that we're going to need to fix as the year goes. And so it was literally, let's make a calculated decision to throw them in the fire right away. Um, and, and we've done that. And so we'll see how we come out of it, but, um, it's a, it's a challenging schedule. It's a balanced schedule. It's a schedule that prepares us not only for the SEC portion of our season, but um, to, to go through some of those bumps for postseason. Um, it's, so it's, it's uh, put together to make us stronger and, and make us compete against the best to see what we're made of. You're hosting the SEC tournament this year. What does that mean? And what's that like as far as your role in all that, as far as making sure everything's ready to go from an SEC a conference tournament standpoint? Well, I don't know what my role is more than anything. Um, I'm sure they'll throw that at me later. Um, but it's really, it's fun. It's fun. I think, I think we have one of the best stadiums in the country. Um, I, I know we do. I wouldn't trade it for anyone. And so getting the chance to showcase that on that stage is huge. Um, I know that we've, we've had a, I mean, we have a ton of exposure and we have the chance to play on TV a lot. Um, but the SEC tournament is is you know maybe second only to the world series and so getting to host it with our people who do an incredible job our event staff austin our grounds crew just getting to see the work that all of them put into it i'm just really excited to showcase all of that um but just to have that that stage in fayetteville at bogle park um is really really exciting i don't know my role in that i think i just um get to, you know, host and talk about how great our, our places and our people are. Um, and I, I would do that anyway. So we'll see as we get closer. Yeah. I think that was kind of what Tim Walton told me last year when he was hosting. He's like, yeah, occasionally they'll ask me some questions, but uh, yeah. I basically stay out of the way, <laughs> make sure. Yeah, pretty much, the crew pretty does much. The crew. But and it just... is unique because it's a full week that your state, you're going to, that's your campus will get exposed basically yeah. uh, to exposure wise with what they've done for the coverage of the SEC tournament of the studio crew there. Uh, it, it is different than, yes, you get a lot of games on and your state, but it is a full week uh, of people going to get to really get to know your, your facilities. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm really excited for that. Um, I'm, I'm already like, Oh, where are they going to put the stage? What are they going to do? Um, it's, it's such a, um, top notch event. Um, and so I am really, really excited for that extra exposure. Um, we're actually about to add, um, we're working through the plans of adding a building to our indoor for more team space. And so I'm also excited to hopefully have those plans close to being ready so we can showcase it at that time too. Um, so it's, it's a, it's an incredible place. Our facilities are, um, I think second to none, I wouldn't trade them. Um, and so getting to, to put that on that platform for that entire week and our fans showing up and just, it's great, great softball. Um, it's really exciting. Will you allow yourself at some point that week 
to kind of take a breath, take a minute, and kind of take it in, uh, considering all the hard work that you've done there. No, because I, I remember I asked him well, in the SEC tournament. I remember the thing that struck me. He was he really took it in. He brought his family in, and he actually watched some of the early tournament games and just took it in and thought back of all the years building the program and the upgrades to his facilities. Do you will you think you do you allow will you allow yourself that? Because I know you're very locked in when you're get when, you're, when it comes to the game. So will you allow yourself at least a minute to like wow, look what we look what we've built. Look and look at where we're where we're doing here. Um, I. Probably. I I don't know. It'll depend on how we play. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'll have to do it early because you never know. No, sure. you know, the interesting thing has been I've never I've never sought out to give myself that moment. I've never said like, but there without fail, two or three times during the year, um, there's just this wave that hits me. And it's just you sit there and you look around at the fans and the environment and the atmosphere. And it hits me and I, it's, it's out of nowhere. Um, and I have chills. I get a little emotional. I am a mom. I think that, that triggers, right. When you have kids, you become like emotional. I don't know. Um, it hits me and it's just like, just this immense amount of pride and, and what we've built and how special it is. And, um, and then it, I have to give myself a, a minute and it goes away and then I'm ready, to, ready to go. And so I don't know if it'll hit that week. Um, I know that it'll hit two or three times throughout the year. It would be pretty special if it happens that week too, but, um, it's just really exciting, not only to see how, you know, Razorback softball has grown, but just the, the state of softball itself nationally, the exposure, how just, I mean, it is, it is just the best time to be in the sport and, um, I'm just really fortunate <laughs> that I get to be in it. Well, I hope you did at least take a minute. You've earned that. So I, I, I hopefully it comes there, uh, like I said, in the process. That's something that has struck me with a lot of the SEC coaches I've talked to over the years that have hosted the conference tournament. That really hits them because yeah. it's such a long week. Sometimes you're in your office and they some of them can watch a game while they're in their office or work, you know, it, and it hits them. So it's kind of interesting yeah. that uh, those some of the answers. Now, something that's also kind of grown, you have a coaching tree. Uh, okay. <laughs> it, it growing. So I'm gonna get. I'm gonna mention some names here because it's pretty. I don't know if you, obviously you don't. You might be surprised by some of them, but uh, in memory lane there. But I'll mention some names <laughs> here real quick. First, Jordan Clark, who was your volunteer coach, is now that the, the, the head coach at FAU. Quick thoughts on her. Oh gosh, well she's a rock star. Um, she was she was made for this role, this profession, and this role, and. She just has this innate ability to motivate everyone around her. She's just a little ball of energy. And um, I think she's someone that everyone kind of needs to keep an eye on because I think she's going to continue to rise in this sport. Um, she's quickly climbed that ladder, um, deservedly so. And um, I, I mean, she was huge in building this program. She was with us our first three years and when we really look at, this isn't a quick thought, sorry. Um, when we look at building our fan base and building our support, she is huge in that. And so um, I, I just think she, she is, she's a rock star. Um, I'm excited to see what she does at FAU. She gave you a lengthy answer talking about you too. So I think it's only fair you gave a long answer. <laughs> I love Jordan. Talking about <laughs> when we had her on on the podcast. Uh, I forgot about this, but you had Boo who's obviously the Purdue head coach. I forgot she was an assistant of yours at one point. Yeah, year one here. She was an assistant here um, and then got the Purdue job after year one and, and we hired Matt. And um, so, yeah, it's it's interesting. Boo also um, introduced me to my husband. So uh, she worked when she was at Purdue as an assistant. My husband was a GA for the football team. And, um, and so long story short, a few years later, she introduced us and basically told us before she introduced us that we were going to get married. And she was right. That's, so. a, uh, that's a whole new term of assistant right there. That's an assist <laughs> right there. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's pretty amazing. You also have had Tommy Santiago was an assistant on yours at when you were at Maryland. Yes. Uh, you had Shelby, obviously, who played for you at Arkansas, is now an assistant uh, coach as well. Mandy Gardner, who played for you at Maryland, is now the new pitching coach at Iowa. Uh, yeah. Uh, Tori Stafford, grad assistant at uh, Arkansas, is now at Creighton. Elena yeah. Eflin, a grad assistant at Arkansas, is now at Illinois State. And Danielle mm -hmm. Gibson, who just played there, is now a volunteer at Georgia. 
Uh, those, and then I'm not even talking about Shayna. Easily was a volunteer for you. Is now at Colorado State staff. Annie Smith, who was a volunteer on your staff, is at Minnesota on the staff. I mean, I can we can go on and on. Taylor McQuillan, Nicole Dewitt, uh, Tori Stafford. Who I mentioned, I mean, Sydney Benz, who's a player for you in Arkansas, is now at Dartmouth as an assistant. That's yeah. a long list. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess I don't um, necessarily stop and think about it. I, I think of it more as like, wow, how great for us that we had those people in our program, you know, and hopefully uh, they they learned something because I know we learned from all of them. And so um, they're, you know, great coaches, but even better people. And so um gosh I just like I don't know if you could uh just hear or see my smile everybody that you read off because they're all just incredibly special humans if I left anybody off I apologize in advance folks but we do have a you'll hear, I'm it, sure you'll a, hear about it yeah lengthy <laughs> time there do you encourage when you're at your staffs like do you when do you do you push them or, or encourage them like hey you know seek this opportunity and and uh, and you know if whether it be a head coach or and things like that is that something you mod, you know talk about like because jordan told me when she was on the podcast she said the thing that really impressed her about you is that even though she was a volunteer you treated her like a full-time like responsibilities you gave her a lot of responsibilities is that mm -hmm. something is that by plan basically to kind of oh yeah absolutely absolutely I, I mean it's our job to get them ready for the next job um more than anything but it's it's also we we hired them for a reason we hired them to be a part of our staff. And so they're a part of our staff. And, and um, if we don't util utilize them to the the maximum, then shame on us more than anything, you know, cause they have a great mind in the game and, and can add a different perspective. Yo and Matt and I have coached together a long time. And so um, when we, when we add a volunteer, we're adding another perspective that we feel like we need um, that's going to challenge us. And they, they all have done that. Um, but yeah, I, I encourage them to find positions. If there's a position, like, I mean, I hate losing anyone, but if there's a position that's great for them, then, then we, we talk through that and encourage them to, to go for it. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think more than anything, I, I, when they come in as GAs or volunteers, they're already in that coaching mindset. But when our players are thinking about it, um, I more so just want to encourage them to try it. Um, and, and that's what Patty did for me when I was, I was like, no, I'm not going to coach. She's, she just kind of was like, well, I just encourage you to be open to it. Um, and I encourage you to be open to it and just don't close the door on that. Um, but just think about, you know, what you can do in that position and, and the impact you can have. And, and, um, I think so often females will just count themselves out before they, they give it a go of like, oh, I want to, well, no, I don't want to coach because I want to have a family. And it's like, okay, well, you can do both. You know, I want, I don't want to coach because I want to get married and have a family. And so more than anything, I just encourage them to go for it. Um, don't, don't think you can't do it until you get into the situation and, and you're going to realize that you're capable of a lot more than you, than you thought possible. Well, that's pretty good. I didn't realize that, that you weren't even considering going into coaching there. Uh, do you ever think about what you'd be doing if you didn't pursue the coaching? Uh, now, no, because I'm like, do I have any other skills? I don't know. Um, no, but, um, at that point I wanted to go into social work. Um, and so I was going, got my master's and I wanted to go into social work and, and it was literally just to work with people and make a difference. I just wanted to help people. And, and, um, and I still to this day, Patty verbatim said, well, that's what coaching, coaching is, yeah. what coaching can be. Like you have you're working with 18 to 22 year olds in the most impressionable time of their life. Um, so it is a version of that. And, and basically if you do it right, you know, if you, if you um, have the impact, make the impact that you, you can have, then, then you're growing them up and getting them getting ready for the world. We mentioned that coaching tree, a lot of vo some volunteers you had there that have moved on. Well, now that volunteer position is going to become a full-time coaching position that just recently passed. It'll take an effect in July. What was your reaction to that passing? I know it's been talked about for a while. It'll impact other sports as well, but now you'll have an, a full, an extra full-time assistant as that volunteer position becomes basically uh, full-time. Well, I have mixed opinions on it. <laughs> I am excited. I am thrilled. I think it's way past time for that to become a full-time position. Um, but I think we also need to have another position. 
Um, so unpopular opinion, maybe, I don't know, because no, you're I not the first be... coach to have said that okay. recently that, 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 okay. that I guess what some of the coaches recently have told me that there, there was discussions of maybe trying to get to five. Is that right? Accurate? Yeah. Of adding the fourth full time and then still having the ability to have that volunteer. Honestly, that's what we need. Um, right now, adding the, the volunteer to a full-time position, it doesn't change the situation for our student athletes. Um, and so our coach to player ratio is still the same. And, um, and really what it, it obviously allows us to, if the departments can, can, can do that. And the ADs decide, um, we can add more security to that position and, and support them. A lot of us have found a way to do that through camps. Um, but it doesn't change the situation for our student athletes. And ultimately our student athletes, um, need a lower coach to, to player ratio. So, um, hopefully that's something that we add later. I'm, I don't want to say that I'm not excited about it. I am excited about it, but we still have big steps um, that we need to take. One of the other uh, unique situations going on in college athletics uh, this past fall, volleyball, women's soccer. And I know this, you know this because you're a big sports fan. You follow all the sports, but volleyball, women's soccer uh, experimenting with seeding 32 teams instead of 16 to create more parity in the brackets, perhaps some less geography centric regionals. I know you've got thoughts on this. What's your thoughts on that? Do you think well, softball should pursue that? I think I know the answer. I could spend a whole uh, another podcast talking about it. It is so past time for us to do this. Um, so I, I am hearing that we will hopefully go that way for the next season. Um, and our, 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 our sports ready. It's time. Um, it is, it's crazy that we still are at, at the level that we're at, that we're still, um, basing region and geography as one of the number one things in seeding. Um, if, if the number one team, you know, they should have the 32 team, but in our current structure, the number one team could have the 16 and the 19 if they're within driving distance. And, and that's, it's just our sports past it. <laughs> I yeah. could spend a whole another hour on it, but it is so past time. We need to, we need to get this going. What you're saying is I need to bring you in, in the off season. We'll just spend an hour talking about it. I got it. I, I, yeah, I let's do it. Loud I'm gonna, but you're right. I'm going to bring my good buddy, Matt Michael with me. Oh, um, there you go. All right. All right. Make a note to grace. On I'm that. with That's a cool. loaded gun. <laughs> I like this. You become an executive producer on the show. I like that, but, but it is accurate. What you bring up. I think people forget this. Like for example, like Wichita state, it, you know, you like to play them in the regular season, but if you're getting paired in the postseason, it complicates things, right? Like it's, it's, it, and that shouldn't be the case, uh, especially right. now that this sport has become a national tournament, uh, and it should be based on what you do on the field, not the fact that hey, a team can bus 400 miles. I mean, that's just is what it is. Yeah. I mean, I mean, what are what are we doing? We're past that, and um, and so I mean, even I'll I guess I'll use it. what were we with a four seed last year, and we had Oregon and Wichita State. Yes. And, um, and there are two that are in the top, I don't know, 25. What were they? Yeah, um, I, mean, I mean, Wichita, Oregon was like a 17, 18 RPI. I mean, Wichita state, obviously a strong three seed. You definitely did not get an easy seed considering how high of a national seed you were. Now, look, in fairness, the sport has so much parity that, you know, you got to be ready to play regardless of who you play. I mean, we saw that last year in the tournament with some of the upsets that went right. down the regional, but I do know when you play teams in the region, I've heard this from coaches. When you play a team in your backyard, it's tough because they kind of know your, they know your material maybe even more so than anybody. Yeah, they're very familiar with you. And I'll use another example and I'll phrase it this way to not make anybody mad. But if, if we, if OU is one and Oklahoma state is the seven seed and we don't end up getting seeded and we're 17, um, we're going to one of those. So yeah. one and seven is getting 17 and, and well, you got sent to Oklahoma, your first uh, tournament. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we did. And we were a lot lower at that point, <laughs> but, um, but without fail. And, and there's a lot of different um, examples I can use. That's just the one that I think is the most powerful. We have three of the top teams all within driving distance. And if one of us finds ourselves outside um, that top 16, we're going to get sent to the, one of the other two. And, um, that's not fair to, I mean, that's just not great for anybody. It's not great for whoever is higher. It's not great for that 17. Not that we're worried about that as much, but, um, there's just, it, you know, our sports past that more yeah. than anything. 
Yeah, I mean, Patty Gasol went off on this a couple of years ago when Wichita got sent there. Wichita that year was a top 20, top 25 ranked team in the country. They got sent to number yeah. one. Like, what? Yeah. Uh, what? You know, what are we doing? Um, it's that, just it's just crazy. All right, wait, I've got it down. You and you and Michael, summer pod, just break down the whole number. Yeah, I like this. This is a good idea. And I'll give you Let's a executive producer, like, title to it for that episode. Uh, okay. But you have more important <laughs> things to worry about between now and then. And that's your team this year. Now be my last question to you. Uh, as you get going into the season, what are a couple keys for this team to accomplish your internal goals? Uh, I think the biggest thing is just going to be how we recover when things don't go don't go right. I think we have a lot of talent. I think we have great veterans that are going to anchor our team. Um, we're going to hit some bumps. Every team does. And it's just going to be how we respond more than anything. But it's just controlling the game in the, the circle. Um, and controlling our mentality um, in the box. I think we have the best defensive team we've we've ever had, no matter how we move the pieces, um, they're solid. Um, and so it's just, you know, doing, controlling our, our heads more than anything. Well, we look forward to seeing your team. I know a lot of fans up in Arkansas get ready for, to see your team play. Uh, it's good. We, I look forward to seeing you in the clear water, but uh, thanks for always doing uh, the show. I know it's super busy with everything you got going on. Uh, but we always appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Uh, we always love having you on the show, and uh, thanks for doing it, and uh, we'll we'll cross paths during the season. Sounds good. Thank you so much. I always enjoy being on and talking with you. So thanks for having me. Have a great day. See you soon.